Hey everyone, this is Three Questions with Dr. Whitbeck. There we go. I'm so excited for this. Yes. Hey, Dr. Christy Whitbeck is actually the, the superintendent in Fort Bend ISD. And I am really excited because I'm joining you all in July of 2023. You're going to work with your leadership nice. team. And um, we actually had a meeting uh, before today. And you told some really inspiring stories about um, some of the educators, you know, in your your um, career path, some of the people that really inspired you. So I, I absolutely wanted you on the podcast. So I'm really excited to have you today. And I know as superintendent, you are like totally taking time out of your day. There's like a million things going on in your school district. So thanks for being here, first of all. Well, it's my pleasure. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm really excited to join your, your team. And you're, uh, the, the team that I've talked to already, absolutely wonderful. And everyone's been so welcoming and supportive. So I, I'm really excited to... Um, to join you all really, really soon. So Dr. Whitbeck, I remember, and I was really excited to ask you this question because you shared this story with me and it was really emotional when you shared it. I'm like, oh, I wish I got this podcast. So now here we are. Um, but when you think about your, your career as a superintendent, all the stuff you've done in education, and then you think about the teachers that inspired you, who's like a teacher that really inspired you and why? Well, I've had a few actually, even when I was a little girl, uh, there was a teacher in second grade, and uh, she was just one of those motivational kind of teachers that uh, she did a lot of, uh, I guess you would say, techniques to encourage you to push yourself. And I just remember the multiplication facts, and you had a rocket, and we, you would go back to the back, and it was an independent kind of activity. But her, her preface was you go at your own speed and then your rocket's going to climb every time you pass the twos and the threes <laughs> and the fours and all that. And I got my rocket to the twelves first. And what she gave me was a piece of bazooka bubble gum and a little drawing pad. That's mm -hmm. all. It wasn't anything big. But what she did was she fired me up and made me realize I was a little girl who was good at math. You know, now I'm running a $780 million budget. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess there's a connection, right? But she made it fun. And I, I was, I think, self-motivated just because she set the room up to allow for that. Whoops. And so I, I think about her and I think that she's just amazing. Uh, but I, I will tell you that one of the most inspiring was my high school student council sponsor, Mr. Andre. And so I was fortunate enough to be elected student council president. And I remember that it was my senior year in high school. And he was talking to me about what I wanted to do. And at the time, I thought I would want to go into law school, political science. I had the teaching bug a little bit. My mom was a teacher, but um, I wasn't really sure. And I just remember these words he said to me. Well, whatever you do, Christy, you make sure you go into leadership. You're a natural and the world needs you. I'll just never forget it. Why in the world he said that to me on that given day? I don't know, but he did. And so in each activity that I've been, I've engaged in, even from teaching to then move into assistant principal to principal and on up, um, I have gravitated toward leadership hmm. just naturally. And But I think about those words and those the teacher's words are so powerful. I, I think we can never underestimate what they're doing. And what they're saying to kids and, and the difference it makes. I love that. And we're going to give a little Mr. Andre a little <laughs> applause there. The, uh, you know, one of the things that when I talked about um, and because of a teacher that I, I really tried to connect is that on any given day, you could say something to a kid and it will stick with them until the day they die. And it could be a positive thing, a negative thing. I, I think about like my first day of kindergarten. Uh, actually, my kindergarten teacher, Mrs. Stock, who could be listening to this podcast because I know that she's listened before, uh, taught me bunny ears. And it's amazing because I still teach my I still tie my shoes in bunny ears. And uh, what's really powerful is actually thinking that my daughter, Clea, who is my oldest daughter, ties her shoes in bunny ears. Right. And you can see how a legacy is passed down. And then you think about like Mr. Andre seeing that, you know, in leadership with you. And then how many people you've inspired to go in leadership themselves, right? And how that's been passed down and just absolutely amazing. And so that beautifully leads into the next question. I know you said you've 
been assistant principal, a principal, obviously tons of other leadership roles and guaranteed, you know, you know, especially because of what you talked about with Mr. Andre, um, when you're teaching leadership happens there all the time too, whether we choose to recognize it or not. And so when you think of all the administrators that you've worked with, whether you had them as a kid um, or someone that you, you know, worked with, who's an administrator that really inspired you and why? Well, I would say that that uh, during the time in which I was a, a principal, there was a superintendent and a deputy superintendent, Dr. Leonard Merrill and Dr. Elizabeth Clark. And they were very strong, it was in Katy ISD. And uh, they asked me to open an elementary school and I did. And then they asked me to open a middle school and I did. Then they asked me to open a high school and I did. And so I would say provided me with these amazing opportunities but even beyond that, I will never forget when um, they paid for me to go to Superintendent Academy. They took care of me to just encourage me along the way on my journey of being a superintendent. Dr. Merrill took the time for me to do my uh, little in internship you have to do when you're in the coursework. But something I would share that was really unique was Dr. Clark. One day, uh, it was after I had opened a middle school and an elementary, and I was really in the middle of a doctorate program. Uh, no, I'm sorry, I hadn't started it yet. She meets with me. What's next? And she says, I want you to do two things. And I was like, okay. And she slid a PhD program application to Texas A&M across the table. And she said, you need to do this. And I was like, oh, that's going to be so much work. <laughs> and I was like, I've already opened these schools. And, you know, just I had two children and I was like, oh, my goodness. Um, and uh, she said, you need to do this because you're a female and you need to have the extra credential. And I'll never forget those words. And then she said, and the second thing I want you to do is I want you to think about opening that new high school. And I was just, I looked at her and I said, but I've already opened a middle school and, I, and an elementary. Why are you sure that's what you really think I need to consider? And she's like, absolutely. And uh, so I ended up doing both of those things. And I talked to her still to this day about that. That I say, you know, you told me to do these two things and I did them both. And uh, I'm grateful, but it was a lot of work. And uh, but, you know, now I say the only thing I want to open is a bottle of wine because I don't want to open any more new schools. I'm finished with that. But uh, she she really had that moment with me. And I think that it was also that female uh, administrator. She was she was never interested in being a superintendent. She was in a great number two. And that's how she described herself. She's still um, an, an assistant superintendent today in the Dallas area. But just uh, taking that time with me and kind of thinking, hmm, what, what is it she's going to need mm -hmm. to really reach her goals? And she did that. And, and then, of course, Dr. Merrill, as well as the superintendent. So uh, I'm grateful for many, many administrators along the way. But those two really paired together to create a path for me that, uh, you know, even though I didn't really kind of at the moment want to open a high school because I thought that's really daunting. I also think about now I've worked at all three levels and I think I'm a better superintendent because I have, because I can connect to the issues that my principals are and my teachers are, are dealing with. I love, and first of all, we got to give a little shout out. <laughs> give a little shout out. Those two leaders. Yeah. You know, I've actually, like I've met, you know, in my travels and this podcast, I've met a lot of people who have opened schools. I I cannot say I've ever met someone who has opened up an elementary, middle school, and a high school. So that's absolutely incredible. And when you said that, that was the very first thing I thought is how beneficial that experience would be to, you know, all of the educators, all of the kids, all of the community that you serve, right? Because you have actually have that experience. And it's pretty rare. Like a lot of times, you know, people uh, are, are not necessarily – uh, you know, well-versed in all those areas, let alone to like kind of build that team, build that school together. It's absolutely amazing. Uh, one of the things that really resonated with me when you're telling that story I, and, I, and when you're talking about these administrators who've had such an impact is a lot of times uh, great leaders will put you in positions that you're not quite ready for. And, and it, it, it elevates you, right? It gets you uncomfortable. And you kind of talking about that, displaying that, it's much easier to lead and, you know, 
put people in challenging situations that you know they could actually uh, find success in too, right? Even though they not they might not know it at that moment. Um, but seeing that as a leader is really crucial. And so I absolutely love that. And so you've had a ton of experience uh, in education, working, you know, basically at all levels, seeing so many different things. But I guarantee if you go back to, you know, your very first year of teaching, um, there's things that you would do different, right? And there's things that you would improve. I, I, I know that I look back and I, I'm still connected with some of the kids that I taught and, uh, you know, every chance I get, I apologize, you know, because there's so much I could have known, done better at that time. But if you go back to your very first year of teaching and you look at all the educators that are entering the profession, you know, or they're maybe finishing up their first year, what a piece of advice would you give Dr. Wickbeck in, in, in the very first year of teaching? It's so hard because even today, I remember that it's such an overwhelming feeling. You, you feel like you have so much on your plate and you bring it home and you try to plan and, and to do. So I think I would be, uh, I would say to people, just do the best you can. You don't have to feel like you have to work all day Sunday to be ready to go in on Monday. Do the very best you can. And looking back, I, I think that the kids, it, they remember how we treated them more than they remember actually what we taught them. And I, I may have shared with you my story on that, that I had a little boy reach out to me about two years ago, and I was his first grade teacher. But this email comes across and it says, "Are you, were you my first grade teacher? And I saw the name and the name was Virtus. And I've never known another kid named Virtus in my whole life. And I was like, oh my goodness, I haven't heard anything about him. Well, he's like 40 years old and he works for the city of Houston. He's very successful. But he tells me in this email that he remembers how kind I was to him when he was abruptly taken from the class and had to move in with his grandmother. And uh, then later uh, we connected and we reminisced and I recalled, you know, that I went and picked him up on a weekend and took him to the Galleria in Houston and we walked around and had lunch and he remembers that. So he doesn't remember that I taught him to read. He remembers that I was good to him and kind to him, especially when he was in an, kind of an unstable moment in his life. And what a good thing it was that he reached out to me. So that's a whole nother story. But the thing I would say to teachers is we get so bogged in the lesson planning. I used to spread all these binders because, you know, it wasn't done on technology systems when I started teaching. It was done in lots of manuals. And so I would haul them home, spread them out on the table, spend hours and hours and hours making sure that I had thought through everything I was saying and doing for three different reading groups and two different math groups and all of that. And I, and while I think that's important, I would never want to, ever get the message across that we don't plan because we need to. <laughs> but I think I would say, don't sweat the small stuff. Mm -hmm. Focus on the actual children. Mm -hmm. That would be my biggest advice to myself if I were doing it over. The bulletin board doesn't have to be perfect. Mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't have to change like every week. <laughs> I think I put pressure on myself, things that just weren't, weren't really all that important in the end. You know, it was a little perfectionistic maybe. So I would say, slow down and just really, really focus on those kids and, and uh, also plan more. You know, back in the time I did teaching, we didn't plan in groups like people are doing today. And mm -hmm. I think that's a time saver and it's just smart. Mm -hmm. uh, whether it's a professional learning community or whether it's just team planning, it's just smart. So if I had it to do over, I would try to get cadres of that going. I love Either that. In my school, I would do that today if I was if I was back in the classroom. Yeah. And like I actually I, I'm, I'm pretty sure. And I think we uh, Dr. Goffney, actually, um, I know you're she's in the area. She's superintendent, I think, in Aldine. Is that correct? And she's in Aldine. Yes, Aldine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so she she actually wrote in because of a teacher, too. She shared a quote that really resonated. And it, it always stuck with me because it was the first time I ever heard it. And it's I can't remember who it's from, but she had shared it. And it was basically of the sense that um, even when you're really struggling and you you know you're having you know a hard time as an educator you're still making an impact as long as you care about kids and i think that's something when you talked about i remember you sharing that story about you know 
um, with with your staff about like who's your vertus, and that really kind of resonated with me and how important that actually was. Is that you know even when we're struggling, as long as you care about kids, that's all that you know that that's is what's really going to resonate. And when I first became a principal, I, I remember I was uh, you know pretty young on the staff, and I think a lot of people question how I would do. And I think what really saved me is that people saw me at recess, being around the kids, spending time. Uh, and they're like, you know what? He's probably going to make mistakes, but we know his heart's in the right place. So I think yeah. it's not just an impact on the kids, but the people that see that you're doing the work that they know if you're, if you're in the, your heart's in the right place, they, they get a lot more leeway, you know, to make mistakes as you go. Um, a gentleman named Dr. David Pesek, he was a principal. He said something to me and I'll never forget it. He said, a, a teacher that is really good with relationships and struggles with curriculum will last longer than one who's the opposite. And, you know, th there will be a lot of issues there. So Dr. Whitbeck, uh, Agreed. very, very <laughs> inspiring. Um, and and it's, it's incredible to learn about your career and the impact that you've had. And, um, I, and I'm sure, you know, if Virtus is listening, uh, I'm sure he would agree with me too. So thank you so much for being on the podcast. Everyone, thank you so much for listening. Uh, you're going to actually have a chance to hear more from Dr. Whitbeck. I'm having her on a longer podcast to really kind of learn about her and her career and all the incredible things happening at Fort Bend IC. So thank you so much for listening. I hope you have a wonderful day. <laughs>